you ever felt like managing your personal finances is like trying to solve a complex puzzle where every piece seems to be a different shape and size? You create dozens of categories, you track every penny, and yet at the end of the month, you're left feeling overwhelmed and unsure where your money actually went. Well, you're not alone. Today, we're going to dive into the world of personal finance, but with a twist because we are simplifying it. Say goodbye to the tedious spreadsheets and the endless categories. It's time to make budgeting a tool for freedom and not a chore. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror. Where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control, ourselves. Welcome to the Financial Mirror and thanks for joining me today as we continue to work to improve the one thing that we can control ourselves. Here at the Financial Mirror, it is not about the numbers and spreadsheets alone, but about transforming and educating you on money so that you can make smarter financial decisions. If this is the first time you are joining in, don't forget to hit subscribe on YouTube to be notified of all the new episodes as they release. If you are watching on Rumble, don't forget to follow the channel to get notified episodes there. And if you are listening to this on a podcast platform of your choice, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave a five-star review and a written comment as both go a long way in getting this information out to more and more listeners. So I have recently uh, been doing a lot of coaching for different clients, and there's something that's been coming up. There's something that has been consistently happening, and it's it's I, I've talked about it, but I don't ever think I've talked about it from this angle, from this lens when we're thinking about budgeting. What's been going on is that I have multiple clients all overcomplicating budgeting, right? It can it makes people frustrated, it makes them give up. And let me tell you, budgeting is the bedrock. It is the foundation. It is as as basic as it gets. If you want to control your personal finances, you need a budget. Now, as I said in the intro, this episode is getting rid of the spreadsheets, it's getting rid of the all those categories that you just don't know what to do with, and it's just simplifying it. But a budget should be a tool for freedom. It should be a tool. Dave Ramsey says it, you know, a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Now, when we think about it from that lens, you have to understand that budgeting is not taught. And I think that that's what's crazy is that when we think about what you learned in school, when we think about what you've learned over time, if you have not ever really learned budgeting, you could figure it out. But the problem with that is that people fall into these these particular patterns where they believe this is better, this is more efficient, this is more effective. Yet what ends up happening is this overcomplicated thing, whatever this monster is that we've created, and it leads to people being so frustrated with budgeting that A, they feel like it's the most limiting thing in the world, that it's not freeing, like they don't feel like more free with their money, leading to more B, frustration. They give up on it. It's all out the window. They pick it up a year later when they hear another Financial Mirror episode and life goes on in this vicious cycle. So today we're going to get rid of all that. We're going to talk about how you can start budgeting and make sure that you're not overcomplicating it in the process. I've done multiple episodes on actually like different styles of budgeting. Uh, We've talked about various types of budgeting. Today, I've strictly am talking about some of those areas that I have consistently seen come up in people's real life. And so I know that there's a good hefty portion of people that are listening to this episode that are watching this, that these will be applicable to your life as well. So going to kind of break this out uh, into some varying degrees. I'm going to go through uh, multiple things that I've seen over the years when I've worked with clients on their budget. And every single thing that I talk about today, 
I want to leave you with a solution. I want to leave you with a way that you cannot let this impact you in your life. Okay. So every single thing we talk about today, there will be some action. There will be something that you can take away from it to make sure that you're applying to your life. Now, the one thing before we jump into the episode is if you're not budgeting, I challenge you, pick up a budget, get started budgeting. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can how you can simplify budgeting today. Um, but the biggest thing here is that I don't really care where you budget. I don't really care how you budget. All I care is that you budget, okay? Meaning that you track your expenses, you track your income, and you ensure that your expenses don't exceed your income. At the root, that's that's all we're trying to do when we budget. That's all we're trying to do. So I want to jump into this. I want to go over some of those common things that I see consistently show up in people's lives and how you can prevent them from coming up in yours. So I'm going to start off with some common pitfalls that I've seen. And I, I wanted to hit these first because this is really the root of everything. And and if you ran out of time and you only got to listen to the this first point, um, it could really, really, really help your budgeting. So uh, the the other the rest of these you're going to realize are, are are kind of those slightly more advanced topics. Some of those that are uh, people don't commonly run into yet that. If you budget for any amount of time, every single thing I talk about today will impact you. So I encourage you to listen to all of them. Um, But these first these first two that that are are just they're so critical. So let me jump into them. The, The first common budget pitfall that I see is people create too many categories. They create too many categories. Uh, I tell people when I'm working with them, like, Hey, let's, let's try to get this down to like five or six. When you're starting off budgeting, the thing that will get you the most is the whole paralysis by analysis ideology, right? So when you see a transaction and you have so many categories, what ends up happening is you get so fixated on, well, man, this could be fast food or it could be restaurants. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, if you would have just made your category like food and groceries, well now not only is it, does it not matter if it's fast food or restaurants, you can throw your groceries in there with it. You can throw your coffee that you picked up at the gas station that morning, right? Like you can now take that part out of it. Don't make this hard. Less categories is better, especially when you're starting out. Now, over time, you may add a category or two. Now, I do caution you that it does get away from the basics of budgeting. When the more and more categories you add, the harder it is. A lot of people like to to add more categories so that they can um, track it, report on it, see like, oh, well, how much did I spend on at at you know on fast food? Um, there's multiple ways you can do that. Not going to go into all of them, but a lot of budgeting applications out there have things called like tags or labels or something like that. You can utilize those for those type of things um, to not overcomplicate your budget. So the first thing that I see the most is too many categories. The second thing that if you make this one change, it will make budgeting so less stressful, so less frustrating is infrequent budgeting. And I'm not talking like start and stop every six months. I'm talking when you let a, you let your transactions backlog, meaning you don't go and look at your transactions, but maybe once a week or once every two weeks that now it, it doesn't feel like a, a quick task. It feels like an all out chore. It feels like this like never ending task. And the longer you wait, the bigger that task becomes and people will put it off and put it off and they'll only do it on the weekends, but then they have a busy weekend. So then they don't get a chance to do it. So now they're going to push it to next weekend and next weekend gets busy and then it gets pushed to the next. So if you will just, and I did a little self-study and I tell my clients this, I did a little self-study on average. I spend, I did it for six months on average. I spend five transactions a day, five transactions a day. So if you, and you can, you can, if, that, if that's you, you may be plus or minus a little bit, but if that's you or, or you're somewhere close to that, you could 
simply go through and make these, make it like daily and do it in less than a minute, right? Five transactions you can categorize in less than a minute. I could probably just, just, you know, say, say five transactions, categorize them out, out loud right, right now. Like don't challenge me, but, uh, all I'm saying is that you can do it. You can do it. So the solution to this, these pitfalls is, is, pretty simple. And I went over it. It's you've got to limit the amount of categories. Uh, you've got to just focus on what are those big macro categories that you care about. Maybe it's, it's, uh, auto when that includes your insurance, your gas, your maintenance, all that. Maybe that includes just home and that includes your utilities. That includes your mortgage or rent. That includes anything that home supplies, like that could include all those things, food, anything that, goes into your mouth because you need to eat, they can go in there. Um, then you can have like a miscellaneous expense and then you could have like a shopping expense or something, right? Like there's five categories that I just named off right there. Like that's kind of all you really need is just the basics. Now, how often I don't, I don't know. I don't care. All I'm saying is that the more often you do it, the less, the less of a chore it's going to feel. So I'll let you decide that, but daily check-ins is what I recommend. However, if you do it every other day, it's not a big deal. Every other day is just fine. So second thing, second big uh, thing that overcomplicates people's budget is the, you know, we're going to stick to the KISS principle and I don't, and I'm not going to use keep it simple, stupid. I'm not going to call you stupid, but uh, I'm just going to call it keep it super simple, right? Like K-I-S-S, keep it super simple. So how this applies is goes back to categories, too many categories. When we think of keep it, you know, super simple, what we're talking about is you need to figure out where, where, and, 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 you know, how you can start to, to cut out unnecessary, like complicated parts of your budgeting. Okay. So if your budget is on a computer and only on a computer, like Excel spreadsheet, you don't have access to it on your phone and you're only behind a computer once every five days, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're only going to be able to update your budget every five days. If you're, if you don't have um, access to all of your bank transactions, or you don't, you know, import them somewhere, or you don't, you don't get anything but a paper statement in the mail to write all your transactions. You, you have a problem, right? Like and you've got to figure out ways to un overcomplicate these things. So, uh, whether that be, whether that mean that you need to change how you budget, maybe that's like every single time you make a transaction, you write it down in a notebook. Uh, if you don't have access to a computer, maybe you do a mobile app. Uh, if you don't have access to a, a smartphone or something of that nature, maybe you have a notepad that you write down your expenses and your income. The thing is, is cut the roadblocks out. If you've got obstacles keeping you from budgeting, figure out how you can get around those obstacles and keep it super simple. It doesn't have to be this like miraculous spreadsheet. It doesn't have to be this miraculous software. Keep it super simple, right? Like keep it as basic as possible. You know, there's envelope budgeting. There's all these other types of budgeting. Just keep it super simple. Figure out what it is for you and do it. Okay. Pretty, enough on that one. What I kind of wanted to talk about was uh, next was technology, technology, using technology to simplify budgeting. Now, there's tons of apps out there. I did an episode. Uh, I used to be a big, a big uh, spokesperson for Mint. I used to love, you know, pushing people to Mint. It was free. It was super. Uh, once you get set up, it's super, you know, easy to use and, and you know, connecting accounts and all that super easy. Uh, when Mint shut down, I did do a budget review uh, where I, I signed up for all the premium budgeting apps, did some testing myself to see kind of like what are the pros and cons of each. And I will tell you that Quick and Simplify, Rocket Money, and Every Dollar were kind of the three that I landed on as being just really top notch. And I recommend to others. So 
Um, I I know there's tons, and I, when I talked about this in my episode. I know there's a bunch of YNAB uh, folks. YNAB stands for you need a budget. Um, what what drew me away from it was cost. Super expensive, and it kind of goes back to the previous point. Keep it super simple, right? You don't need a hundred and twenty dollars. I think it's like 114, 115, 119, something like that dollars a year for a budgeting application, right? Right. Like I I just couldn't get behind it. Tons of people are YNAB believers and I got it. Uh totally cool with it. If you use it, uh totally cool with it. I just don't think like that's not where you have to be. So quick and simplify rocket money, every dollar are all uh reasonably priced and are great to use. So now, why why do I say technology simplifies budgeting? Well, the biggest thing is is that you can filter your transactions into your budget. So as you spend the money, it automatically comes in and all you have to do is categorize it. So you see McDonald's, you're like food. You see grocery store of your local community, <laughs> grocery store. You see Walmart, shopping. You see your mortgage or rent company, home, like, right? Like everything is like super, super, super simple because of the fact that all the transactions come in. Now, second reason that technology simplifies budgeting is automation. So you can create rules inside of these different technologies that will auto categorize based on previous purchases. So if every time you shop at Amazon, the only thing you buy at Amazon is like home supplies, you can make Amazon purchases automatically categorized to home. If the only time you shop at Target is for like baby supplies, you could make it baby supplies or whatever your categories are. Um, that's beside the point, but you can make it where the there's automation to it. So as you spend money, your categories will automatically fill in themselves. Super easy, right? Because if you only have to categorize five transactions a day, and now all of a sudden four out of your five are automated, you're doing one a day, right? Like, so that's the beauty of it. That's how technology will make this easier. So uh, I've talked about it. I, I believe in it. Um, I would tell you, try out one or two apps and figure out which one works best for you. That's my my tip here is, is just try out one or two. Figure out which one works best. Try out one for a month, then the next one for a month, and then the next one for the month, if you use the three that I I talked about, and figure out which one you like best, right? All of them kind of offer a free trial. Um, Rocket Money and Every Dollar actually have like free versions. Um, Quick and Simplify does not. So maybe maybe do Quick and Simplify last. I think Quick and Simplify has like a 30-day uh, money back guarantee type thing. So if you don't like it, you can cancel in 30 days and they'll give you your money back or something like that. That's how it was when I did the review. I'm sorry if that's not uh, what it is anymore, but go look and see what it is before you sign up. But try a few, try a few over the a few months and see which one you like best and go with it. Uh, I'll, I will make sure that I post uh, some information about that episode so you can go watch that budget, budgeting review. But anyways, just know there's automation out there. You need it. It's super helpful to have your transactions filter into these uh, applications. So that's all those things are great. And technology can really make budgeting easier. The next part, the next part that people overcomplicate budgeting is the psychological aspect of budgeting. So um, emotions are really what leads people to overcomplicating budgets. Um, it, it's what drives more categories. It's what, you know, drives, um, people to making this like this super, super hard process, right? Super, super hard process. The emotions. Well, man, I, every time I'm, I think I'm spending a lot at Starbucks. Um, and I just, I really got to get my, I really got to get a hang on that Starbucks spending. So let me make a Starbucks category and let me, let me focus on that. And let me, let me clean that up. And then all of a sudden a few weeks later, like, man, like 
I just noticed like I've got a lot of money going to subscriptions. Let me let me make a subscriptions category and let me start to focus on that. Uh, oh, and let me add these. Let me add. I, I just need to tag these things. These are my tax related things. Let me let me tag these taxes and and oh oh and oh my goodness. I got I've got to make sure that I track this transaction separately because man, I I want it to come out of this account. Like all of these things. Are, are true. Like, like I hear these things all the time. Like I, I, all these, I have to's and, Oh, I need to do. Oh, listen, listen, don't overcomplicate it. There's a psychological aspect that's going to make, make you think that you need a hundred labels, a hundred categories and a hundred different ways to, to slice the bread. And what I'm telling you is don't overcomplicate it. Track your income, track your expenses into five or six categories Make sure that your expenses don't outweigh your income. That's it. That's it. And over time, I'm telling you, it, as you get better at doing that, and I'm talking about two or three years of doing that consistently, you can start to to play around a little bit more. But when you're initially starting, it will devastate you if you try to do it any more any more complex than that. Stick to that income expenses broken out into five or six categories. Make sure your expenses don't exceed your income. That's it. That's it. But the psychology, your brain is going to tell you, Hey, you need to be doing this. You know that you took that out of that savings account. You better make sure that you budget that in its own budget. And that budget should not be different or should be different from your other budget. Like your brain will tell you some crazy things. Just remember stick to what I talked about and make sure that there you're just developing those good habits income minus expenses and it should be a positive number or zero right we want to do zero based budgeting but if you have a positive number put the rest towards savings and make it zero just shouldn't be negative okay so be mindful of that be aware of that um, the biggest reason that people hate budgeting is a, they don't want to know that they're overspending in that category that they know they're overspending in. And when it's on paper, it's real. Uh, And the other thing is that it just, they, they overcomplicate it themselves and it makes it really, really difficult to do. So that's enough, enough on psychology. The next thing that I want to wrap this up with is you need to create a flexible yet realistic budget. Okay. I cannot stress this enough. You've got to be flexible in your budget. And a lot of people give up budgeting and this part does make this slightly more complicated for most. You're not, you're going to overspend in a category. You will. I do. I overspend in categories. Here's the difference. Here's where people kind of overcomplicate things. It's okay to overspend in categories as long as you're balancing your budget. Most people don't remember balancing a checkbook. However, if you do, it's like balancing a checkbook. If you don't, let me walk you through it. If you overspend in, let's say, food, let's say you spend a hundred extra dollars in food, and let's say you have pet Fido, and you have a category called pets because Fido needs their medication, their vet, and their food. So you overspent in food. And you gave Fido some fun money. Fido got an extra hundred dollars in fun money, right? I'm not taking away Fido's vet visit, their medications or their food. Fido is going to live comfortably this month. However, you overspent in your food and see how, see where this is going now. You took that away from Fido. You should, <laughs> anyways, you, you've got to take that from somewhere. You can't just remain overspent. So what you're going to do is you're going to balance your budget. You're going to go take the hundred dollars that you gave Fido this month for a whole bunch of chew toys and raw hides, And you're going to move that into your budget that you had for food. That's now going to be zero because you took a hundred dollars to, to get you from negative 100 to zero. You've got a balanced budget. Now you need to just live your life the rest of the month and then close out the end of the month. But that's how you do this. It takes some balancing. That's that flexibility, right? That's that flexibility. Over time, the longer you do this, the more easily and more accurate you'll get with being able to predict how much you're going to spend in a month 
But initially, just know uh, you're going to have to be a little flexible. Over the first six months-ish, you're going to have to be flexible. That other word that I use is realistic. Um, don't think you're going to put $1,000 into your savings and you're going to cut how much you eat out and how much you spend on food by $1,000 in a single month. It's very, very hard to do, not impossible, very, very difficult to do. So be realistic. If you want to cut back on how much you're eating out, drop it down $100 and put that $100 in savings or investing. The next month, drop it down $150 or $200. Ease your way down. Don't try to cut cold turkey because that's a total lifestyle change. And you don't want to go through that because you're going to fail. I'm not going to say you're going to fail. I I like to tell myself that I'm going to fail because it it motivates me, but not everybody is motivated by failing. So let me say this. You, it will be hard. And if you don't succeed, you may give up budgeting all because you are unrealistic. So be realistic with yourself you, you know, like you can't say, Oh, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose 50 pounds in the next two weeks. Like that's not realistic and it's really not healthy. So, um, I'm not here to give you dieting and nutrition advice, but you know, like that's, that's not super healthy. Two weeks of 50 pounds is not super healthy. So just know, set achievable goals and adjust your budget as needed. Just make sure that your income is always higher than your expenses, right? Or at least break even at least break even. If you're higher, put the rest towards savings and make it break even. So that's really what I wanted to cover today. I wanted to cover like some of these areas that I consistently see people really struggling with when it comes to budgeting. Um, and I, I just know, I just know that if you can take these lessons and apply them to your life, you will get better at budgeting. And when you do, you will be better for it because that will be the foundation to you reaching your financial goals. I don't care what your financial goals are. I don't care if it's getting out of debt. I don't care if it's saving for a home down payment. I don't care if it's investing, building wealth, retirement, whatever it is, this will be that step that you need to really propel you forward. Okay. So stick to it, stick with it, and you will succeed. Now, if you're having a little trouble, if you've been doing this, you've been on and off, on and off the the boat just a little while, and you're ready to take control of your finances, I'm happy to make you a client as well. I've helped multiple people get back started budgeting, fix up their budgets, get reach their financial goals, whether it be getting out of debt, saving for retirement, saving for that new home, whatever it is. Uh, just head over to thefinancialmirror.org and hit book now in the middle of the screen. You can schedule a free consultation today. We'll talk through how I could potentially help and then put you on a package that helps you get exactly where you want to be. If you do want to give an extra dose of support to the stream, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop and pick you up some awesome financial mirror gear. I truly appreciate everyone tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this episode. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform of your choice, don't forget to leave a five-star review and a written comment as both go a long way. Now, get out there, get budgeting, make sure that you don't overcomplicate it and become more frustrating on yourself. And, and you will be successful budgeting. Till next week, continue improving the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's Financial Mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves, change our mentality, and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives. 